Hello, my fellow human beings, and welcome to another episode of The Solar Punk Farmer. So today we are actually going to be talking about one of my favorite crops to grow in aquaponics, and that would be strawberries. So strawberries are an excellent choice for aquaponic growing. They grow very vigorously, they produce delicious fruit, and they're not too hard. I would say they're intermediate difficulty when it comes to the range of crops that I have grown in aquaponics. So the really cool thing about strawberries that have been grown in an aquaponics system, at least from my experience, is that their flavor profile is very unique. There are certain notes and hints to the flavor of aquaponically grown strawberries that I have not tasted in strawberries that have been grown any other way. It's actually kind of crazy. So I have tasted strawberries that have been grown conventionally, that have been grown organically, that have been grown in a local garden, and that have been grown in hydroponics, in addition to having been grown in aquaponics. And I gotta say, the aquaponics strawberries take the cake every time, as long as you're able to maintain good water quality and keep your plants happy. And aside from their flavor being absolutely superior, Strawberries will actually do quite well in an aquaponic system provided you know how to take care of them. And that's what these seven tips and tricks are going to be covering today. We're going to be talking about the best way to plant strawberries in an aquaponic system. We are going to be talking about how to take care of them correctly, how to maintain water quality for strawberries, and how to ensure that they do not succumb to the kinds of pests and diseases like crown rot and root rot that strawberries will typically get in an aquaponic or hydroponic system. So let's jump right in. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I wanted to give a brief update on the aquaponic system and on the California native wildflower bed over there that I detailed in the previous video. So the romaine lettuce is now gone to make way for the strawberries we will be planting today. And I recently threw in some dwarf blue curled kale that will grow to replace the lacinato kale. This is a new variety that I would like to try to see how it performs in smoothies and salads as opposed to the lacinato as well as in the towers, of course. Uh, here is some komatsuna and some arugula that I also planted recently. Really excited for these guys to grow up, especially the arugula. I love aquaponically grown arugula, it is so delicious. And the celery and the peas are just going absolutely nuts right now. I have been harvesting peas already. The sugar snap peas are insanely good and the celery is delicious as well. I mean, it's, it's gotten huge. You can see how many stalks there are in there. Uh, and I'm gonna really start picking it soon and incorporating it into soups and salads and snacks and other dishes. Uh, and uh, here are the seedlings right there. I just started a new round and they're coming up. Uh, so that is your update on the aquaponic system. Let's head over to the California native wildflower bed. And here is the California native wildflower bed. As you all can see, we have quite a bit of germination going on. And as we have gotten a couple rounds of rain, and as the sun is starting to get higher in the sky because we're approaching the spring equinox, the wildflowers have really been taking off and I've been really happy to see this. This is the very densely packed area from before that I showed you guys and all the natives are just coming up like crazy. It's pretty incredible to see this kind of growth on the native wildflower bed. I'm so, so happy about it. And I'm pretty excited to see how things look by the time I release the next video. This is gonna be really awesome. I will continue updating you all on the beds progress. So here is the strawberry rootstock that I will be planting today. There are 10 plants between these two bags and I got them courtesy of my good friend Mr. List who is a urban farmer and farmer educator based out of Silmar, California. His social media info is in the description of the video if you'd like to get in contact with him. This is a fantastic day neutral variety that produces big delicious fruit. Day neutral means that this plant will actually flower and produce year-round provided environmental conditions are right for fruit production. For strawberries, this means that the outside air temperature is between 40 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly. When it comes to my climate, that's most of the year. So for most of the year, I will be harvesting strawberries. All right, here's tip number one. Pre-soak your rootstock in a seaweed extract-based rooting solution. Liquid seaweed extract is an excellent biologically derived high potassium fertilizer that also contains cytokinins, which stimulate the division of root cells. This will give your strawberry rootstock a head start and help to mitigate transplant shock. Here I am using the Grow More brand seaweed extract, but there are plenty of other fantastic products on the market. I added the recommended dosage of 4 ounces per gallon of water from my aquaponic system to prepare the rooting solution and mixed it thoroughly. A 10-30 to 30 second soak in the rooting solution is perfect. Be sure to handle the roots very carefully and gently wash off any soil particles or detritus that have clung onto them. After you are finished with the solution, it can be used elsewhere in the garden as a liquid fertilizer. On to tip number two, keep your grow media clean. Strawberry plants can very easily develop crown rot if the crowns of the plants, that is the area where the leaf stems attach to the base of the plant, 
remain wet for long periods of time. The biosolids produced within an aquaponic system tend to attract and retain moisture. So if excessive amounts have accumulated in your grow media, your strawberries will be very susceptible to crown rot. This is especially true for the zip grow tower since the accumulation of biosolids can also encourage water to leak out of the front of the towers. This is less of a concern in a media bed system since the biosolids tend to settle out at the bottom of the media bed. I just like to give the media inserts and wicking strips a quick pressure wash prior to planting. Don't get too carried away as you don't want to harm the media's resident beneficial microbes and red composting worms. And now for tip number three. Plant the strawberries with the crown protruding out of your grow media, as shown here. This is probably the most important measure you can take to help keep the crowns dry. You're going to want to plant the rootstock just deeply enough so that the roots are fully enclosed by the media, with the rest of the crown exposed to the open air. So here's a closer look at what I mean when I say plant the crowns outside of the inserts. You can see the base of the crown right here is essentially flush with the outside of the tower and the roots are extending downwards into the tower insert right there. And again, the reason you want to do this is to discourage crown rot, which is a very, very common issue with strawberries grown aquaponically or hydroponically. And I've had experiences with this. When it comes to another growing method, such as a media bed, I would recommend actually planting at about the same depth and I've gotten good results that way as well. When it comes to NFT, crown rot should be less of an issue, although I can't exactly comment because I've not grown strawberries in an aquaponic NFT system. Next up is tip number four, have lots of mechanical filtration. And I mean lots, especially if you are growing in towers or an NFT system. If you want to keep your strawberries healthy and happy for a long time, you're going to want to minimize biosolids loading as much as possible. A large mechanical filter, such as my swirl filter, plus an active and healthy colony of red composting worms and other aquatic and semi-aquatic microfauna will go a long way when it comes to breaking down and removing biosolids. All right, here's tip number five. Prune your strawberries using the 4D system. That is, remove any dead, diseased, damaged, or deranged vegetation. Here I just removed a few dead and sickly looking leaves from the rootstock so that they do not cause any problems while the strawberry plants are getting established. I like to use precision shears to sever the leaf stem near where it attaches to the crown. The leftover leaf sheath will help shield the tender crown tissue underneath from moisture and biosolids. Moving on to tip number six. Now that you have planted your strawberry rootstock, Veg them out for three to four months by pruning off any flower clusters or runners that emerge. This will encourage your mother plants to put on biomass, which will only increase their vigor and yields in the long run. After that, you can let them produce flowers and runners and prune in accordance with the 4D system. And now for my final tip, tip number seven. Make sure to manage phosphate levels in your system. Phosphorus is typically not deficient in leafy greens only systems, but it can get a little low if you're growing lots of fruiting crops. Recommended levels for fruiting crops to promote optimal yields are 20 to 40 parts per million. API makes a phosphate test kit that you can use to monitor your phosphate levels, and this is what I am using to test them here. Your results will be ready after 5 minutes, and you should be fine as long as your water tests well above 10 parts per million. So it's been about five minutes and it looks like the system's water is sitting at about one part per million of phosphates and that is definitely way too low for strawberries. Again, we're gonna be looking for 20 to 40 parts per million once our strawberries are in full fruit production. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some soft rock phosphate right now. I can definitely do a video on that in the future if there is any interest. If you'd like to see that, please let me know in the comment section below. All right, farmers, that is gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe and turn on that bell icon below so that you can receive notifications for when I upload new videos. Really appreciate you guys supporting the channel and what I'm doing here. There is gonna be plenty more to come once again, so stay tuned. I am the Solar Punk Farmer and catch you on the flip side. One more.